Hi everyone, welcome to Cobalt Academia's Hacking Hafta video series. I'm Bishra, aka r 10 an offensive security researcher and a Pentas architect at Cobalt.io. With Hacking Hafta video series, we explore vulnerabilities that we encounter every day during pen tests. In this specific video, we will see how to explore file inclusions vulnerability by using different scenarios. If you're ready, let's jump in. Hi everyone, in this video we will see how to exploit local file inclusion vulnerability on a hack box machine called Poison. So I did some basic enumeration and, re and I realized that there is the port 80 open on this box. So it gives us a temporary website to test local.php scripts. So as you can see, there's an input area and it gives us the PHP files that we can test. For instance, if you check out for info.php, it will be a running info.php file here, which will give us the output for info.php. So if you do init.php file, as you can see, it gives us the output. So basically what we can do here is that we can just write one of these file names to see the output when we run the file. So it sends us to this file browse.php with the file parameter. Whenever you are testing, whenever you are testing for LFI, you should be careful about these kind of parameters, file, path, URL. Whenever it's referring to a file, you should always try to reach out to other internal files on the server. In the specific case, this functionality is only supposed to allow us to run the PHP files that's that's, that's been listed on this temporary website, but I will try to reach out the internal files as I am testing for LFI. What I'm doing is, of course, I'm checking for etc pass vd and I'm getting the output. Whenever you see parameters like file, path, URL, or any other similar parameters, you should always check for LFI. So this was the most basic scenario. I will continue with more, more complex ones. In this video, we will see how to exploit local file inclusion vulnerability by using a Hectobox machine called Waldo. So I specifically wanted to add this video to this video series because there is some filtering, um, filtering in place that truncate our input. So as you can see, I did some basic enumeration and I saw that port 80 is open. When I go to the main page, it gives me the following HTML file list.html. So what I've done is I've intercepted the request with burp to see what kind of requests are being sent. I said at list, I deleted these items and so what kind of requests have been sent. Let's see together. You can see file write, file read. Um, read.php all these kind of files have been sent what i wanted to do is i saw the, i saw that file read.php file which gets a parameter in this post request as file whenever i see file path um or similar parameters like url i'm always trying to read the internal file to test lfi rfi vulnerabilities so what I'm doing is that I will just poke around a bit with the file parameter. Whenever I am testing for LFI vulnerability, I'm generally checking for the current file um, to see what kind of response I'm getting. Of course, I will do the most basic one um, to reach out the internal files. It's not giving me anything. If I delete this, uh, it's not giving me anything. Let's remove this dot, still nothing. So what I will do is I will double these dots and also the, so I will double the dots and the slashes um, in case it's being filtered or truncated. One, two, three, four, two slash, one, two, three, four, two slash, one, two, three, four, one, two slash. I will be including these payloads um, in my cheat sheet that I will, that I will include besides this video in the blog post and um, you can just check it out later. And as you can see, when we double the dots and the slashes to bypass the filter, we got we got the etc pass video file content. So pretty basic exercise, but I wanted to include this since this is another scenario. Yeah. 
in this video, we will see how to exploit remote file inclusion vulnerability on a hack the box machine called Tartar Sauce. So I already done some basic animation. Let's go through it and see how to exploit this vulnerability. So what I've done is I've, di I've done some director brute forcing on port, port 8. And I realized that there is a folder called web services. Uh, when I continue doing director brute forcing with derp, I realized that there is a directory called vp, which is a little instance of WordPress. From there, I decided to continue with vp scan to enumerate on the WordPress page. When I did that, I realized that and one of them was this one. And vp scan gave me this pad, readme.txt file. I went to changelog to see the current version and I found a really funny comment here. Let's go there. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it changed version from this to this to trick VP scan. That's funny. And the next thing I had done is I checked for this version um, for the plugin to see if there is any vulnerability and lucky I am. Uh, I found an R file, remote file inclusion vulnerability on this specific version. So as you can see, we already have the pad. The only thing that you are supposed to do is add this parameter apps pad and then the hacker's website evol URL that you're going to add. So what I've done here is that I created a really basic file called hacker.txt, your hacker. I just added this content and then I fired up simple HTTP server to call this file. Let's see how it will work. Let's call it for hacker.txt. When I do that, I don't see the file content. The reason is that it's trying to load vpload.php file. And when you concatenate these two names, it's basically not giving us any output. So I, I come up with this idea. I, I decided to put a PHP file here to get a reverse shell and name it as vpload.php so that uh, whenever this file is called and this root pad, it will give me a reverse shell automatically. And then I ch I modified the file a bit. Let me remove these a bit. We don't need these comments. Then I need to write my IP address and the port number that I will listen on for the reverse shell. Okay, looks legit. I'm saving it. And the next thing I want to do is since the since it's looking for this file name, I will be moving she.php file to vpload.php. So what I'm doing is I'm listening on port 8000 from um, Python Simple HTTP server. And the next thing I will do is I will be listening on port 1234 for reverse shell. So what I'm doing is I'm just listening on the root directory for it to get this file automatically because this is the only file that it will be looking for. When I call it, we got a reverse shell as dot 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 data automatically. As you can see, it called vpload.php automatically under root directory. So this is pretty basics, but I wanted to include this scenario for remote file inclusion in case you see that there is a WordPress plugin or there's a application running in the background which is vulnerable to RFI you saw that there is a known vulnerability here the only thing that you're supposed to do is play around a bit and see what kind of specific scenario you have in here in this video we will see how to exploit LFI exploitation by using PHP wrappers on a hack the box machine called crime stoppers I think this is a bit of a hard box and it includes really cool scenarios. So if you're ready, let's jump in. So in the first step, I'm realizing that there's an index.php file on part 80 and there's a parameter of being called. So the first thing I tried is calling internal files etc password, which gave me an error. In the second phase, when I'm testing for LFI, I am trying to go back to the file and we just stuck in a filter. It's detecting that we are trying to uh, reach out to internal file. The next thing I tried is the null terminator, which also being detected. So most of our scenarios are already blocked in the first first phase. So the second thing I've done is using a PHP wrapper to get internal files.
So what I've done is I've used the basic syntax for PHP wrapper for index.php file, which gave me a base64 encoded version of the source code. Uh, if you go around and play around a bit, you will see a couple of files um, that you need to read. The first one was upload.php, which we can see here as a file upload.php, then we have index.php, common.php, and list.php. I read all of these four files and I realize that when I upload a file, this file is being named um, by using an algorithm. As you can see, it's being, it's being saved in the uploads directory, then client IP address is coming and there's a secret name that's being composed of, uh, that's being generated by an algorithm. If you read all of these PHP files, you will realize this scenario here. So what I've done is I've tried to upload a file to get a secret name to get a reverse shell. Next up I've done is I've created, uh, I copied the reverse shell in the Kali's default folder as a test.php file. The next thing I am doing is I am modifying test.php file with my own IP address and the port that I want to listen on. Oops. Okay. Let's remove this and write my own IP address. Hopefully I remember it correctly. The port number can stay as 1234. And the next thing I will do is I will zip the file. So we start the file in this way. The next thing I will do is I will go to the upload direct upload file and and I will be writing the following shell shell and I will intercept I will be intercepting on and send a tip. So the next thing I will do is I will be using the amazing feature of Burp to upload a file um, from from my own directory so so i will be uploading the file from here by saying paste from a file then test.zip and this name stays as shell i am sending this as you can see we got a secret name that's perfect the next thing i will do is the following i will be listening on port one two three four i intercept it off again and send the repeater to reach out to the file with the same syntax. Instead of PHP wrapper, we will be finding the file with zip wrapper. Then, um, as you remember from the upload.php file, the files are saved under uploads folder. Then client IP, which is 10, 10, 14, 4, my IP address will come and the secret name and the tip should come. We save the tip. If you remember here, let's see. We save the tip as shell. So what I will do is that I will be writing my IP address, then the secret tip that I just got, uh, URL encode, and the tip shell. When I send a request like this, I'll get a reverse shell. So this is a really cool box, which includes very various scenarios. First, we needed to um, try LFI methods that we know. Then we needed to continue with PHP wrappers to read the source codes. Then we check all of the source codes. We realized that there is this uh, upload functionality which actually allows uploading files then we decided to upload a zip file um, we basically copied the test we basically copied the PS php reverse shell and um, and compressed it as zip file uploaded in here by using burps functionality um, to paste from your file we get the secret name for the file which is generated by the algorithm defined by the application and then we called it by the zip wrapper uh, which is a complex box i i believe uh hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for more content thank you for watching my videos stay tuned for more content cheers